Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on section 6, Bilinear Transformation. So in this lecture we are going to look at uh, examples of uh, this topic called Bilinear Transformation. So let's go by an overview of what we are going to do. So we are going to look at how we can implement digital um, digitally analog controllers. So let's say you have already designed analog controllers for your analog plant and you want to implement a digital version of it. So we'll look at that. We'll look at differencing method, which we have also looked at in the previous class. So we won't go into much deep into differencing methods. I'll just show you the results. We won't go into the derivation. Bilinear transformation, you have also seen how to do bilinear transformation in the last lecture. So we'll just look at an overview of the results from bilinear transformation. We'll look at digital PI controller. So PI controller is a proportional integral controller. So we have looked at equations for analog PI controller. So we'll see how we can apply bilinear transformation to a digital PI controller. We'll look at digital PD controller and digital PID controller. So please uh, note that uh, in your mini project, you have to implement a PD controller. So you can pay attention to the equations for digital PD controller. We look at pre-warping. So we have also looked at pre-warping in the previous lecture. So we'll look at some more examples of this. And then finally, we are going to look at uh, how to design a digital controller directly in the Z domain instead of uh, using emulation techniques to convert uh, analog controller into digital control. So how to do direct design of uh, digital controllers and we'll look at finite settling time design. So we'll start with the digital implementation of analog controller design. So, this is an indirect approach to analog controller design. So the first thing is you design an analog controller for the analog subsystem. So you, let's say you have an analog plant. You can use techniques that you have previously learned in control systems to design an analog controller. And then number two, you can obtain an equivalent digital controller and use it to digitally implement the desired control. So let's say you want to instead of using analog electronic components, you want to implement that controller on a microcontroller or an Arduino for instance, then how can you obtain a digital equivalent of that controller and implement it to achieve the desired control? So in this, to, to do this, we will use a recipe from signal processing. So, a digital controller is basically a filter, a digital filter that attenuates some dynamics and accentuates others so as to obtain the desired time response. So you have, if you have learned about filters, you know that you have filters like uh, low pass filters, which allow low frequency signals to pass through or don't attenuate low frequency signals but it attenuates high frequency signals, for instance. So similarly, a digital controller can behave in such a way where you design it for a particular range of frequencies or dynamics. So it will attenuate some dynamics and action to it the others. So, so you want to obtain the desired response. So for example, if if an input to the system is a sinusoidal input instead of just a step input, then you have to consider the frequencies of the sinusoidal input before designing your digital filter or digital controller. We will limit our discussion of digital filters to differencing methods and bilinear transformation. So as you have learned in the last lecture, any controller in continuous domain can be mapped into a Z domain using bilinear transformation. And bilinear transformation maps 
the left hand plane of the s plane into the unit circle of the z plane so any so bilinear transformation is like kind of guarantees uh, that a stable analog controller will uh, be a stable digital controller so the system under study is assumed to include an analog subsystem with digital to analog converter which converts a digital signal into an analog signal and an analog to digital converter which is the opposite model with a z transfer function and a cascade controller as shown in figure 6.1 so block diagram of a single loop digital control. So um, you have a reference input uh, all in terms of Z and reference is compared with the output of the plant Y. So you have E of Z as input to the controller block. So the controller block is represented by C. The controller output is U and then you have the plant block. So plant block, this whole block. Um, so let's say if you have an analog plant, then uh, basically first thing you would have is a digital to analog converter to convert the digital controller signals or to, or to hold the digital signals by using zero order hold. And later after the controller, you would have an analog to digital converter so that would basically sample the controller outputs and give you the digital or the sampled version of the output. Next, moving along. So procedure 6.1. Uh, so how do you go about um, converting your analog controller into a digital controller. So that is explained using this procedure 6.1. So the first step is you have to design an analog controller. So C, C of S. So analog controller is in terms of S for the analog subsystem to meet the desired design specifications. And there are various techniques that you can do this like um, continuous P controller, PID controller, or PI controller, or many other techniques like you can use root locus techniques, all placement techniques uh, to come up with uh, a controller with the desired uh, closed loop holes. You can also use various other control uh, design methods in continuous domain that you have previously learned. Number two, map the analog controller to the digital controller. So transform C of S into C of Z using a suitable transformation. And here we prefer to use bilinear transformation. Number three, tune the gain of the transfer function C of Z times G of Z. So where G of Z contains um, the zero order hold the analog uh, plant uh, model and uh, the analog to digital converter. So using a proportional Z domain design to meet the design specifications. So here we have to tune the gain of this transfer function after converting into a digital controller using bilinear transformation, let's say. Number four, Check the sample time response of the digital control system and repeat steps one to three if necessary until design specifications are met. So basically control in control systems design or in digital controls, um, there is no right, there is no correct answer. Like you cannot design like a, a system which is, uh, you can say 100% correct. But as long as uh, the design specifications are met. So you might have to iterate through your design, like converting, let's say if 
you're using um, some other method, method for differencing and it does not work out, then you can use another method, another transformation, different types of transformation. And let's say if bilinear transformation does not work, you can use bilinear transformation with uh, frequency pre-warping and so on. And then tuning the gain of the, the whole system with the, the control and the plant model uh, that you can also do iteratively. As long as the design specifications are met, uh, that's it. Now, uh, step two of procedure 6.1, that is the transformation from, from analog to digital filter must satisfy the following requirements. So the requirements are a stable analog filter that is poles in the left-hand plane of the S plane must transform to a stable digital filter. So that means the poles that are in the left-hand plane of the S plane, the real and imaginary plane of the S plane must uh, fall inside the unit circle in the Z plane. So that's what it means. Number two, the frequency response of the digital filter must closely resemble the frequency response of analog filter in the frequency response range zero to omega s over two. So basically as we will see, or as we have seen previously, I think that um, using uh, transformations such as bilinear transformations, the frequency range is uh, the analog frequency range from zero to let's say infinity is compressed or is um, like distorted into or is compressed into this range zero to omega s over two. So most transformations that satisfy the above two requirements to varying degrees. However, this is not true for all analog to digital transformations. So maybe some transformation won't satisfy these uh, requirements, but you have to check after you do the transformation whether um, you have a digital stable controller or not. Now let's look at the uh, differencing methods. So we have already looked at the derivations of this. In this notes, it's given in a slightly different way, where instead of using integral, um, the derivatives are used. So for example, instead of using integral, the four differencing is y dot is approximate metered as uh, using the Euler technique, one over t, into y of k plus one minus y of k. So this is slightly different, but it means the same thing. In the in my previous notes, uh, it's slightly different, like using integral technique. So in differencing methods, uh, recall that an analog filter can be represented by a transfer function or differential equation. You can easily convert a differential equation into a analog transfer function form in terms of S using Laplace transforms and vice versa. Numerical analysis provides standard approximations of the derivative so as to obtain the solution of uh, uh, differential equation. So by substituting uh, four difference, backward differencing uh, equations in your differential equation, you can obtain uh, numerical uh, analysis of your equations. So numerical or approximations, numerical methods of uh, say solving differential equations. So that is by substituting Euler equations like forward differencing, backward differencing equations. The approximations reduce a differential equation to a difference equation and could be used to obtain the difference equation of a digital filter from the difference differential equation of an analog filter. So from differential equations using 
Euler substitutions of um, these derivatives like for differencing, backward differencing and so on, we can obtain uh, functions which are known as difference equations, which is this. So difference equations are in terms of k. For example, y of k plus one, y of k, u of k, u of k plus one, u of k minus one. So these difference equations are in terms of k and they can be easily programmed into a digital controller or a digital microcontroller. And then you can implement it easily. So using differential equations, you can convert by substituting Euler equations into um, difference equations, which can be programmed into a digital controller. So we have already seen uh, how we can do this in one of the previous notes. So the final result of uh, four differences uh, the equivalence of S and Z trans Z variables S and Z. So S is uh, Z minus one over T in a Ford differencing method. And we have derived this in the previous lecture, how we came to this. Now moving on, there is an example here. So the example is uh, there is an analog filter given, which is in terms of uh, uh, differential equations. Sorry, it's in terms of S, sorry. So it's an analog filter in terms of S. So it says apply the four difference approximation of the derivative to the second order analog filter, where C of S is given as omega n squared over S squared plus two zeta omega n times S plus omega n squared. And examine the stability of the resulting digital filter for a stable analog filter. So you can convert this transfer function in S into a differential equation form like this, which we have also seen how to do this previously. And then you can apply Euler equations to substitute the derivative terms or the differential terms or differential variables or coefficients uh, and use Euler equations in place of the differential coefficients. And you can arrive with what is known as a difference equation in terms of K. So that's what you have here. Um, and another way is you can just substitute S using, uh, using four uh, difference equation, we obtained S as Z minus one over T. So you can simply substitute S as Z minus one over T in directly into the analog transfer function. And you can arrive with the uh, uh, this equation. So in in a z form, c of z is omega n times t whole thing squared divided by z squared plus two times zeta omega n times t minus one times z plus, and then uh, in this square brackets is the constant term omega n times t squared minus two zeta omega n times t plus one. So this is a quadratic equation, z squared plus something z plus a constant. Now, so, um, so in terms of uh, where the poles lie of this uh, digital filter, of this um, transformed digital filter, what we can do is find the roots of this and then we can know whether this is stable or not. So if the roots, both the roots lie within the unit circle, then it's stable. And if you look at the equation, so it says for a stable analog filter, we have zeta greater than zero and omega n greater than zero. Positive denominator coefficients are sufficient for a second order polynomial. So if a positive coefficients here, 
then we can say that this is going to be a stable uh, filter. Sorry, um, if it is in terms of analog filter, then sorry, if it is in terms of S, then uh, zeta greater than zero and omega n greater than zero will be sufficient uh, in terms of S, which is uh, this. But in digital filter, so it says, however, the digital filter is unstable if the magnitude of the constant term in its denominator polynomial is greater than unity. So why is that? So the magnitude of the constant term is this, omega n t whole thing squared minus two zeta omega n times t plus one. So why, if this is greater than unity, then what it means is you multiply the two poles in two z poles, and if it is greater than unity, that means either one of them is uh, lies outside the unit cycle. That's what this simply means. If it is greater than one, if this constant tends. So you can put this equation in terms of um, z minus p1 into z plus p1, uh, sorry, p2. So this is plus or minus, so plus or minus. So z plus or minus p1 times z plus or minus p2. So if you multiply p1 and p2, it should not be greater than one. Otherwise it would mean that either p1 or p2 is greater than one in magnitude, which means that it is unstable. So the digital filter is unstable if the denominator constant term is greater than unity. So this gives the instability condition. So if this whole thing is greater than one, then uh, it is unstable. So this is the instability condition. So if you solve for this, which over here, which means that zeta should be less than omega n times t over two. All right. So for example, if t is 0 0.2 and omega n is 10, with these parameters, it yields unstable filters for any undamped analog filter. So there are many things here which can cause this filter to be unstable, like the choice of um, your sampling time and your natural frequency. So if you multiply omega n times t, this will be two divided by two. So this will be one. So if zeta is less than one, which it means it's an undamped analog filter. Sorry, underdamped analog filter. So for these parameters, this is um, this equation will be sorry, this filter will be unstable for any underdamped analog filter. But if you don't have an underdamped analog filter, then maybe these parameters would yield a stable filter. But if you have an underdamped analog filter, this two, a choice of uh, parameters t and omega n will yield an unstable filter. So that's, that's how you can analyze the stability of uh, any transfer function that you convert a continuous transfer function into a discrete transfer function. So using this uh, uh, four differencing method, um, this is what we got here. So this is the instability condition for this. Next is backward differencing. So in backward referencing, you can substitute the Euler equations for y dot of k uh, into your uh, differential equation. If you have uh, a controller in the differential equation form to obtain difference equations. Now we have also learned how to derive 
an equation in terms of equivalence of S and Z, where S is the continuous term. So we got this S is equals to Z minus one divided by Z times T. So this is using the backward technique and how to derive this, we have seen in the previous lecture. So again, a similar example says apply backward difference approximation to the derivative of the second order analog filter, which is given as omega n squared over s squared plus two zeta omega n times s plus omega n squared, and examine the stability of the resulting digital filter or stable analog filter. So solution, so we can just directly substitute s as z minus one divided by z times t uh, into our s transfer function. And then after simplification, uh, we arrive at this. So you have to substitute and simplify it yourself. So I'm skipping the mathematics here. So what you will get is omega n times t z whole thing squared divided by this whole thing in square brackets is the coefficient of z squared. So this is omega n times t squared plus two zeta omega n times t plus one z squared minus two into zeta omega n times t plus one times z. So this is the coefficient of z and the constant term is one. So since the constant term is one, um, we can say that um, it is likely to be stable, uh, stable digital filter, but we also have to look at other stability conditions. So the stability conditions in this case for a digital filter are, so the first one is when you substitute in this, um, in the denominator polynomial, when you substitute minus one in place of z, and that must be greater than zero. This whole thing must be greater than zero. So the first stability condition is the coefficient of z, which is this, because z minus one squared will be one plus if you substitute z as minus one here, it will be two zeta omega n times t plus one, and then plus last plus one. This should be greater than zero. So that's the first one. The second one here is that uh, the magnitude must be greater than uh, the first term, the first uh, coefficient, sorry, the coefficient of the highest uh, uh, order of the polynomial. So the coefficient of essentially z squared here because the highest order is two. It's a quadratic equation. So this must be greater than the magnitude. So basically the magnitude of Z should be equal to one. So uh, this whole term should be greater than one. So basically this whole term, the coefficient of Z squared minus one should be greater than zero. And then the third uh, stability condition is when you substitute one in place of z. So you have z squared, the coefficient of z squared minus coefficient of uh, z, which is this minus two into zeta omega n t plus one, and then uh, plus one, this should be greater than zero. So if all the three uh, conditions are satisfied, then we can say that we have a stable digital filter. And remember, um, if you get a numerical uh, solution, 
when you convert your continuous transfer function into a discrete one using this, uh, all you have to do is simply compute the roots of the denominator. And if any root is, any of the roots are greater than one, or if it falls outside the unit circle, that would be the, uh, the best way to say it, then it is unstable if it falls outside. But then using this, if you, well, we are analyzing in terms of zeta and omega n parameters for this uh, transformation, backward difference. Now, uh, this is, this whole conditions, all these conditions are satisfied when zeta is greater than zero and omega n is greater than zero. That is for all stable analog filters, because um, to get a stable analog filter here, you have to have zeta and omega n both greater than zero. Then this is stable. That means the roots fall in the left-hand plane of the S plane. So if you have a stable, so what this means is that if you have a stable analog filter, then you will have um, a stable digital filter because these conditions are, all well, these three conditions are satisfied if zeta is greater than zero and omega n is greater than zero. So that's what it means. So that's how you analyze the stability of um, your transformation. So next, uh, moving on to bilinear transformation. So for the bilinear transformation, we have uh, derived uh, the equivalence of S and Z as S is equal to uh, C. And in place of C, we have two over T. So we previously derived S as two over T times Z minus one divided by Z plus one. But over here, it's uh, C is used and we'll soon see that C is to, in fact two over T. So, for bilinear transformation, we have to substitute this S in our continuous transfer function and we can get uh, the equivalent transfer function in terms of Z. So the if you look at the first order approximation, Z is equal to e to the power S times T, where T is the sampling time. So if you try to get S, so basically you have to apply natural log both sides. So S times T would be L and Z and S would be one over T. So basically over here, S is one over T, L and Z. And um, this is equivalent to two over T times whole thing, Z minus one over Z plus one, which implies that C is two over T. So, if you consider this equation, if you consider this, uh, the left hand and the right hand side of the approximation, approximate uh, symbol, um, if you multiply Z plus one that side, and if Z is one, so basically Z plus one over T times L and Z, if Z is one, you get, two over T because ln of one over here will be zero. So you get two over T times zero. And over here, if Z is one, then you have two over T times zero. That's why this whole thing is equivalent to two over T times Z minus one over Z plus one. So uh, which is uh, so that C is 2 over T, which implies that C is 2 over T. Digital filter C of Z from an analog filter can be by substituting S is equal to C times Z minus 1 over Z plus 1. Now in terms of uh, frequency response, in terms of frequency response, uh, let's say if Z is uh, e to the power j omega t, 
where omega is some uh, frequency. Uh, let's say if s is j omega, so basically z would be e to the power j omega t. So where omega is some frequency, continuous frequency. So digital frequency would be e to the power j omega t. So if you substitute uh, in place of z, e to the power j omega t. And um, so basically you, you have to convert a continuous uh, transfer function by substituting s is equal to c times. In place of z, I have e to the power j omega t minus one over e to the power j omega t plus one. So if you substitute this, you will get in place of s, um, you get c times e to the power j omega t over two minus e to the power minus j omega t over two. So basically it's substituting this equation over here and then try just uh, multiplying this whole thing inside this by e to the power j omega t over two divided by e to the power, sorry, multiplying it by e to the power minus j omega t over two divided by e to the power minus j omega t over two. So you get it in this form. So e to the power j omega t multiplied by e to the power j omega t minus over two minus j omega t over two, you'll get e to the power j omega t over two minus one times e to the power minus j omega t over two will get e to minus e to the power j omega t over two. Again, so in the denominator, similar way, multiply e to the power j omega t times e to the power minus j omega t over two, you'll get e to the power j omega t over two. And then multiply that by one, you'll get that. So you can put it in this form and uh, the reason why we put it in this form so that we can get an equation in terms of 10 or tangent. So basically C, C of Z where Z is e to the power j omega t is equal to equivalent to the continuous transfer function where you substitute uh, j times C times 10 of omega t over two in place of s. So in place of s, we substitute this. So this is equivalent to that. This is equivalent to this. Now, at the folding frequency omega s over two, where omega s is the sampling frequency. So if you substitute instead, uh, instead of uh, omega, omega s over two, so you get C times e to the C of e to the power j omega s times t over two. You instead of omega, you substitute omega s over two. So you'll get j c ten of omega s times t over four, because omega s over two divided by two will be omega s times t over four. Now, which is also equivalent to so omega s is here, uh, yeah. omega s is equals to two pi over t. So if you substitute two pi over t in place of omega s, you will get two pi divided by four, which is equivalent to pi over two. So tangent of pi over two times c, so 10 of pi over two is in fact infinity. So any number times infinity is basically infinity. So what you get is C of j times infinity. So if you substitute this frequency omega s over two, you get continuous frequency as infinity. So bilinear mapping squeezes the frequency response of the analog filter for frequency range zero to infinity into the frequency range zero to omega s over two. 
So this results in the distortion or warping of the frequency response. So because it is compressed from this range into this range, that's why it's squeezed from this range into this range. And number two, it eliminates aliasing. So aliasing is eliminated due to the periodic frequency response. Okay, the next part is pre-warping. So we have also looked at this briefly uh, in our last uh, lecture, in our, the last section. So basically pre-warping is correcting the distortion of the frequency response at a single frequency. So if you have a frequency of interest, omega naught, that you want to design your digital controller for. Uh, so at a frequency, single frequency omega naught, depending on the mapped filter. And so we can consider this frequency so that um, uh, the analog frequency omega naught is equal to, um, so the response frequency response uh, uh, in S domain by using continuous transfer function is similar to, or is the same as the frequency response of that particular frequency in the digital domain. So this is what we want. Because as you know, as you have seen in the last page, that um, for an analog frequency of zero to, from zero to infinity is squeezed into zero to omega s over two. So for example, if you want to consider frequency omega naught such that you have a gain of gain margin of three dB, or a P or PI or PD controller. So for that particular frequency, omega naught, um, so uh, Z will be equal to E to the power ST. So if you have a frequency of interest omega naught in S, so it would be J omega naught times T in Z, E to the power J omega naught times T. So C of that is equal to substituting uh, our bilinear equation uh, in place of S, so which we found in the previous uh, page to be J times C times 10 of uh, omega T over two. So we substitute omega naught here, omega naught times T over two. So what would be the frequency response uh, for this case. So is it equal to uh, C times or C of J omega naught, which is what we want. We want the response uh, to be the same. So an analog response uh, at omega naught should be the same as a digital response at omega naught. So for what uh, condition is this going to hold? So it says equity holds if of four, C is equal to omega naught over 10 of omega naught times C over two. So if C is omega naught over 10 of omega naught times T over two, then the tangent terms will cancel and you will be left with omega naught. So if our C is this, then uh, equity holds in this case, which means that the response, analog response at frequency omega naught is same as the di digital response at frequency omega naught. So this is how we pre warp the frequency by choosing C such that it is equal to this. Now, if uh, <coughs> omega naught T over two is small for very small values of omega naught, T over two, we know that tangent of omega naught T over two would be equal to, or would be approximately equal to omega naught times T over two. That is if omega naught times T over two is very small. So in that case, since tangent of omega naught times T over two would be same as omega naught times T over two, we can say that C would be equal to um, 
c would be approximately equal to 2 over 2 t so this if this argument omega naught times t over 2 is very small so pre reopening is only effective if you have large omega naught you know so if the product of omega naught times t over 2 is large then pre opening is effective otherwise um, this pre warped c would be same as 2 over t which is what we have uh, seen previously now bilinear transformation guarantees stability of a digital filter for a stable analog filter so it maps points in the left hand plane two points inside the unit circle. So it guarantees stability, except for the warping part, the frequency warping part, uh, stability is guaranteed. So consider the three cases shown in figure 6.2, a point in the left-hand plane, a point in the right-hand plane, and a point on the J omega axis. So it's on the S plane. So angle of S after bilinear transformation is equal to angle of Z minus one minus angle of Z plus one. So we are looking at three points in the S plane. One of the points is in the stable region, uh, S1, which is on the left-hand plane. The other point S2 is on the margin of stability. And the other point S3 is on and the right hand plane, which is in the unstable region. So angle is computed as um, the angle from positive real axis to the line that the three points make with uh, zero, zero for the center. So that is the angle. So for a point inside the unit circle, uh, Angle of S, um, absolute value of this is greater than 90. That means angle should be greater than 90 and less than minus 90. So, which means it should be in the left-hand plane, right? So that's S1 for point, for a point of, of the unit circle, where the magnitude, uh, sorry, the absolute value of the angle of S is equal to plus or minus 90 degrees, which means a point that lies on the imaginary axis. So such as case is S2. So that point would be in the unit circle. So you can see the equivalent point for S1 in uh, Z, which is this one, Z1, which is in the inside the unit circle. For S2, which lies on the imaginary axis, it's on the unit circle. So that's the point on the unit circle, that's Z2. And um, for a point outside the unit circle, where the angle of S, the absolute value of that is less than 90, that means this angle is less than 90, or plus or minus 90, then uh, that point, which corresponds to a point in the right hand plane of the uh, S plane. And that point is shown as Z3 here. So that point lies outside the unit circle. So that is the difference uh, between the angle Z minus one uh, and Z plus one. So Z3 minus one and Z3 plus one. The difference in these angles is the angle of that Z3. So that using equation 6.13. So, so this is the angles associated with uh, the bilinear transformation.